Good morning, everybody. This is just a brief video to give a rundown of this collection that I have. I like showing little collections, and I think a lot of people do this with their books. They have um, little mini collections uh, when they find editions of things that are that are cute to them. And I think about like four years ago, this um, four or five years ago, this like this kind of old modern library. A classic where it's cloth and small it's kind of small and square um, wake them up and this stack usually it used to actually be a little bit taller I'm not as crazy for these additions anymore my life doesn't depend on them but I just wanted to show you what I had because I don't know I find them to be pretty and maybe you, this will be an amusing video to all you um, book collectors out there of whatever stripe so yeah we have this beautiful divine comedy one I kind of put my best ones on top here this is like the crispiest one and it's a prose one it's one of those prose ones. So, not like the Divine Comedy I've read before, but I'm um, keeping it because, damn, if I, if I wouldn't love to, 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 to read um, the Divine Comedy in this little book, you know, with a cup of coffee. And then uh, The Trial, um, you know, there's, the, there's the, only that one translation or whatever, but it, this is, like, really nice and, like, red. Um, I think I freaking got rid of the dust jacket like a doofus. The font in this one is perfect. I mean, look at that. Perfect. Um, a Passage to India. I've only read like 30 pages of this, but it was enough to like to get me to realize that Forrester is like the best writer ever. Yeah, it's, it's been around. Um, Weathering Heights. Oh, this is another one of those pristine ones that I have. Like it's all shiny too. It's like no time has passed. There are these um, illustrations that are um, pretty irresistible to buy it. Because, I mean, it's just gorgeous. And then when, while Miss Linton moped about the park and garden always silent. Um, the Red and the Black. This is the Scott Moncrief uh, translation of this. Which is so interesting to me because I love the way Proust sounds so far. I haven't read much Proust, but uh, very excited about that. You know, I think I actually got rid of another copy of this book that I picked up in like a free book bin or something. Because I had this one and I was like, what other uh, translation would I want to look for? Also, I think the font in here is good. You know, it's got that old font. Love that old font where it's like inky and very serify. This is actually always a gift from somebody who knew that I uh, collected these and um, it's also been around. Uh, this will be a good read, you know. It's pretty, pretty clean inside. This is the one I actually open the most of all of them. This is the one I read most. Um, I like the letters and sermons of, uh, of John Donne that are in the back of this. I also love the poems. You know, like the flea and everything, and I like the, I don't know, there's like, um, there's, there's like didactic ones or elegiac ones or things like that, and holy sonnets and things like that. It's just, he's, you know, this is like an essential little book. It's so small, it's got all those sermons, all those letters, all those arguments, you know, all those little paragraphs about women where you're like, wow. The Way of All Flesh was another, this actually isn't mine, this is my roommate's, but it's, uh, I know this is gonna be good in the way that, like, if you read, um, you know, a, a book, it's good. And a copy of Dubliners. I was so stoked to find Dubliners in this edition because that's a favorite book. And to find it all shiny and in this nice copy. It has a little white stain on it, I don't know why. But um, it's a really nice copy. Maybe I'll read The Dead in this book today. And then a couple of Faulkner books. Oh, shit. There's a Go Down Moses. Super dope, and it actually came with somebody's map. Let me know in the comments if this is yours. It came with this freaking map, or this, not map, a family tree of Go Down Moses typed up and like hand drawn. So if this is yours, please let me know because I want to get this back to you because this is precious. But I found it in Chicago. And then last but not least, uh, the one that I've read, I haven't really read that Go Down Moses edition, but I've read in this one, Sanctuary. And this is one of the, kind of a newer type of the same thing where they would emboss it. I don't like it as much. I think it's, uh, but I, I like the spines on them. I like that gold, but it's nice in this blue, but I feel like there are other versions of this that aren't as good as that old like, black ink one. But this is a great book and I'm kind of scared of it. I'm scared of this book, you know? I understand how Faulkner is a bad influence on us. I choose to read him nonetheless. I bet this is a scary book. Anyway, so that's that collection. It's kind of a nice little teeter-tottering stack of those um, 
of those modern library books that we all love so well. While we're talking about books by the Modern Library imprint, I want to give a special shout out to these two books I have that I love a lot. I actually have three of them. So there's this Paradise Lost, The Swan's Way and the Good, you know, the Good Way, and then um, Tom Jones. These are so cool for obvious reasons. I'd love to read the books that are published in these editions and these editions while I can. I know at the Sun Co-op there's a copy of uh, The Plague by Camus in this edition and I keep on almost getting it. Um, but you're also not my friend. But you, um, but you should be my friend. Um, and uh, um, I read this a little bit in high school. I haven't read this edition much, but it's freaking perfect. The books are announced in this beautiful way. It contains the original title page right there. This is actually the second blue copy of Swan's Way that I've got. I love this copy so much. Um, my other one I gave to a friend because I just wanted him to read it. And I found another one mercifully. Um, so I can't wait. When I reread Swan's Way, I want to read it in this edition. Never really absorb what you read until you reread it. Which is why I title videos with ones after them, like, uh, you know, The Sotweed Factor 1 or, uh, you know, Moby Dick 2 or something. Tom Jones is the one I'm currently actually reading right now. Um, I'm a little bit, I just started it. I mean, look how gorgeously it, it, it uh, titles the books with these two little cherubs around there. So those are, those are great. And I also wanna say a word for these, these two here, which are special, I think, modern library, or illustrated modern library editions of some Emerson, and then Brothers K. Completely unbelievable how good these are. It's like it's 1948 or something, but the inside is very readable and, and, and fine. I'm not a huge Marilyn Robinson person, but if you're a... Almost can't believe how good that is. But look at this Bros K. It's got its slipcase. It's got these three fellows on the cover. Forgive me for forgetting their names right now. You can take it out of its slipcase. And look at this here. It's like Andrei Rublev by, uh, by Kar Tarkovsky on the cover. And the spine, a little bit shiny, a little bit worn. And then in the back here, you got, what the heck is this? You see, um, you know, all these, whatever, these priests and generals and so forth, and all these women kind of fighting and, and, uh, and all so forth. And you see like uh, law scenes and whatever. And then inside the book, the parts have these beautiful little illustrations. The chapters have these lovely, like, vintage looking chapter titles. I read part, some of the way in. About 939 pages in total. I read to page 286, I think, judging by where the bookmark was. Look at these freaking illustrations. If you are so lucky as to find a copy of this one, you know, cherish it and read it, and I promise you all I will cherish and read my copy. Turns out I have seven billion of these modern library books, so it's good that I'm doing a video and making a record of all the ones I have so that I can read them and give them to friends and whatnot. A big copy of The Life of Samuel Johnson in that shiny ink. Uh, and, um, you know, everybody loves this. Jesse Ball loves this. I liked Jesse Ball several years ago. I probably would like him again. I'd like to meet him. I think he's somehow friends with Tim Kinsella. He reminds me of Chicago. Or the epigraph in, in Pale Fire. And it's got this kind of bland color to it. It looks like it's gone off a bit. I would, I would prefer that this was in some sort of rich green or something. And it wouldn't be a complete video about modern library books in my house if I didn't give you a rundown of these ones with those bronze spines. So this was one of the first books that I bought, like, with my own money that was like a giant uh, novel that I got. And one of the first books I was ever given by my parents was actually a copy of Fathers and, Fathers and Children by Turgenev that I since, I since have lost. But, um, but the, it's this big copy of Bleak House. I read the first 50 pages and liked them very much, and I think I, I underlined a bunch in it, you know, obnoxiously. And then I but got it in 2015. There you go. It's illustrated with the original illustrations by H.K. Brown, introduction by Mary Gateskill that I think I've read. This book feels a lot better than it looks on this video. I pity everybody who can't hold the weight of this book in their hand and feel how exciting it is to have a book by Charles Dickens that you could read if you put your mind to it. So the Wings of the Dove by Henry James. This is what made me like Henry James. If you're, 
hear me in these videos refer to how much I like him, it's because of the impression I got by sort of sketchily reading through this and remembering not shit except for the basic plot outline. Um, and uh, I like the way it wears because my oily hands. I read this on the bus in Chicago. I wonder, it'd be, I wonder if it'd be fun to go back and look at what I underlined. It's got these like not many words for a page, so you keep turning pages. Some sentences that just sort of disappear as soon as you read them. Um, this is a, a copy of Anna Karenina that I got for somebody so that they could read it and they took it all over the world, I'm pretty sure. And um, I'd like to read this edition. It's that Constance Garnett classic one. And um, it's not the edition I read. I read a Barnes & Noble one last time I sketchily read that and understood nothing. And this is actually the copy of Swan's Way I first read. This is where I first read about asparagus and all of that. And um, still a very good copy. I think there's one page falling out around like page 400. Ginger, treat this slightly gingerly, but don't, don't worry too much. Then this is a copy of Within a Budding Grove. I had to tape it up because my, my bike lock like tore it. But, um, but uh, yeah, I read this one over the course of like several years, actually. I just stopped reading it. There are actually like bits about my life and little diary entries in the margin. Uh, I don't feel like I really read this book very well, but I have a solid impression of the ending of it because I read the ending of it in Great, Ra Great Rapture during a trip to, um, to North Carolina. And then you have these, the green, the gray ones. Their look is bad. I don't like it. It gets dirty. It's kind of dry feeling. But this right here is The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn in this edition, which is one of the first books I ever, like, asked for from my parents and actually got. Um, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, and I remember actually trying to read it in this edition, in this exact book. This exact book was in my hands when I was, like, a small child, and I was trying to understand the words, and I couldn't quite do it, but I was so excited to have a book to turn pages in. And uh, so this book is still special in that regard, and it would be fun to reread it in because it's still holding up nice, and of course all these editions hold up nice. This is like one I got recently. It's basically the only other one in this sort of gray hardcover that I've bought. But it's um, In Search of Lost Time, the last volume, where it's got a bunch of notes and a guide, and then also the last volume, which was not actually put out during Proust's lifetime, which is really fascinating to me. It's still gonna be great, although it's translated by people who aren't those, you know, the, your typical Moncrief. But this is gonna be great. Looks the exact same. Extremely exciting to have this. And then there's those dust jackets. Could do without the dust jackets too. I don't really like them that much. Just as I don't really like the dryness of the gray in the hardcover, but they're sturdy and cool and uh, this one's sentimental. And then there's another one in the house that's, uh, that's In Cold Blood, a copy of In Cold Blood like this, but I don't wanna get that down. This video is already long enough as it is. But this gives you a, a quick idea of, of the modern library books in my house. I've collected them at one time or another. Don't collect them anymore, but I'm excited to have them. Looking forward to reading them. These are all good books. Recommend Henry James to you. If you're collecting a kind of book, you know, lean into it. Don't be ashamed of it. If you stop collecting a book, that's fine. All those ones that you collected, read them and enjoy them. Everybody take care. This has been Leafy, Leafy Concern. Bye.